Well, in the early days, you know, being there for such a long period of time at CBS, I saw the beginnings of stereo, which really came in. And as a music editor, I was uh, delegated to put to work with the engineer to do the first 200 stereo LPs. The first 200 on CBS ever put out was done by Stanley Tonkel and myself. You as a producer were not allowed. You could not come into my room. Agents, musicians, nobody was allowed in that room. I did country and western, I did classical, and we did all, all kinds of things with the, what they used to call the, uh, not the clipper, but the, uh, oh, it would grab the peaks. I can't think of the name of the Limiter. Limiter. We used, I used limiters on the classical records with Bernstein and the New York Philharmonic and those records. Today, sound better than anything they've been putting out in the last 30, 30 some years. And I saw all of that evolve. And then I, you know, I saw the uh, advent of, the, of, of stereo and then also the, uh, the new system, the, uh, geez, I can't even think of that. Surround. Well, not only the surround sound, but the, uh, the CD players. I remember them calling me into one of the studios one time, and they said, uh, we'd like you to check it out. You know, the CD, we got a new system called CD against the original. I said, well, I know that you can raise the level up of the CD. I said, if you match, raise the level up of the LP, the tape, and match the two of them, I said, you'll hear a difference immediately. I said, I don't think the CDs are as good or will ever be as good as the original vinyl. Now, a lot of people have proven me right because a lot of people say that the original vinyls of some of these remixes, which are now in CD form, are not nearly as good. I mean, they don't have the warmth. They don't have the dynamic range because you, in, a, in a CD, you go from zero to nine. With the other system, the tape, you go into infinity. And, when it, and, it was, and I saw them, you know, from using an echo chamber as a stair, the, for an echo chamber, we had a stairwell at CBS into boxes and to everything else. It has, has not improved the sound. Now they got the, v, the DVD. Now, a little story about the DVD. Uh, you can take it for what it's worth. I was got I got an award from the an English company for uh, oh about four years ago. I can't think of the title of the uh, anyway. They invited me to England to give me an award. Uh, I never got an award here. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm still waiting. Maybe I can get Dr. Schroeder to give me <laughs> a little award. <laughs> anyway, I was walking. They had all these little cubicles, and they were all uh, different. Uh, rooms with the tapes playing and so forth. And I was noticing that there was a lot of Miles Davis. They were playing a lot of Miles Davis. And I'm saying, Jesus, you know, what's going on? So I, one time I dropped in one of the rooms. And I sat there. They, nobody knew who I was. They thought I was just just coming there just to check everything out, you know. So I, I said, uh, can you play, the, can, can you play that, that thing you could play? She said, yeah. I said, by the way, you wouldn't have the original, would you? I said, yeah, I got the original record. I said, can you put them both on? I would like to hear them. And he put them both on. And he says, how do you like the, uh, the new CD? I said, it's not that good. I said, you've lost it all. I said, this, the other one, the original vinyl, sounds a thousand percent better. The guy said, oh, you're crazy. I said, you're probably right. I mean, I, I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Anyway, this went on, and I would try other rooms, and I did do the same thing. So one night when they presented me the award, these guys that, were, that I had asked the questions earlier said, you son of a bitch, you, what did, you, you made those records? I said, yeah, and the vinyl is still much better. And a lot of, and the English people still think that the vinyl is much better than the CD. Now, I try to tell them, if you want to do the, I said, there's a way of doing it. You, you've got a cassette, you mix it for the cassette. There's a way of doing it. I said, you want a CD? You mix it for the CD. 
And I said, you want a vinyl? You mix it for the vinyl. You should have three different mixes. And the guy said, you're crazy. We're going to use And now they got the DVD. And when they put the DVD on, I, it was just, I said, this is even more. They said, I said, uh, you can't do it that way. It's not logical. I said, I'm only dealing in logic. You can't do it that way. It's got to be better the way it was originally than trying to manipulate it with the DVD and the CD. You can use the same CD player for a DVD. I said, look at, oh, God, you guys. I said, you guys are just too much. I said, I said, well, yeah. And, I, and downstairs, they were selling vinyl records by the hundreds. And I bought a whole slew of them. Some, some things that I had, didn't have or I had and given away. I used to have 25,000 CD, regular records. I don't have any rec records except some of the ones that I made and only a very few copies of those. I've given them all away to universities. And, now I, and also, uh, Rutgers University just came here a few weeks ago and took out, I don't know, eight or nine bo huge boxes of, of CDs. And I only have uh, maybe, I might still have a thousand left in the basement. I said, take out any duplicates that you ha have that I have and, and whatever you want. I said, I'm not going to play them. And, I, and once I get a record out there, a new record, I never play it anyway. And they were all uh, in mint condition. So I said, look, at somebody might be able to use these. But the, the, they got the now the, this, the whole new systems with editing. Sure, it's much easier. And I appreciate that. And it's much quieter. I appreciate that too. But the sound has not progressed. It is like regressing, going backwards. Even the music is going backwards. I mean, in the arts, we have artists who are thinking into the future. We have people who are building buildings, who are creating these. I, was, I went in for a CAT scan, and I'm saying to the girl at the end, I'd like to meet the guy that invented this. Now, the guy's mind must have been, he must have been thinking about I said, how the hell did he ever invent this, a CAT scan? whirl around and, and then come up with a picture. I mean, I said, but the only thing is that's lacking in our, in our society is that the music is not progressing. It's just stay stationary. I mean, we're, we've got the rock and roll, we had, which is kind of nice, some of it, but then we've got the other people who are just, you know, the rap and everything else is just, what does it mean? You're going to be able to play these 10 years from now and say, you know, the greatest hits? I... <laughs> I don't think so. I still miss the melody. I mean, I miss uh, hearing a, a well-constructed melody like the, like the big bands used to do, e even though they were originals. I mean, look at all the big hits. You got In the Mood, you got A Train, you got all those kind of things. I mean, you can't find that today. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I wanted to go get Washington, D.C. to come up with them. I got a project that I think it's, it's worthwhile to do, but I, I, I want to find out I'm having a guy check it out the next couple of days in Washington at the Library of Congress because there's some things I'd like to do before I die that will enhance or maybe bring back the big bands. I said, when you look at it, you've got every university, every high school, every little hamlet has a jazz band. But what are the jazz bands are playing? In the mood, you know, take the A train, you know, Night in Tunisia or some of the, I said, but they're not doing anything new. Now, I said, it would be nice if somebody would come along and write some new things and get on, a, on the bandwagon and really promote it and come up with the big band hits, you know, of the future. And I said, that's not difficult to do. You write a good melody, you got some good chord changes, you know, and good soloists and a couple of creative people to do the arrangements. I said, It'll be worth worth its weight in gold. I mean, I can't afford to do it. I've spent a half a million bucks on my own record so far. You know, I, I don't mind doing it, but it's it takes. A, I don't have. I don't think I have the strength to do it. I mean, if I could get somebody else to to help me out to you know to fire up these guys to play. You know, I mean, the music is. I've got some new kind of music that I think is rather interesting. You know, it's it it borders on simplicity, yet, but with a different twist. You know, and whether or not it's going to be successful or not, I, I, who knows? But at least it's like a painting like there, you know, behind you. You say, well, what is that? Uh, P 
people won't like it. I, I bought that at an auction for a hundred bucks. I mean, I think I know the guy who who did that. I think that's worth about ten thousand bucks. That thing there, maybe even more, because his paintings are worth up to a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand. I mean, that just happens to be a print, but the print is very valuable. He he gave me a print some. 25 years ago, which I have it hanging in my home in the country. Uh, I can't think of the guys. But anyway, it, it, I mean, it, his mind is working into the future. And I think this is what we have to do. I mean, David is doing it with his band down there because they're firing those kids up so that they do something spontaneous. They don't, I, mean, I, I was telling uh, one of the instructors there, I don't like to write long arrangements. What I want the, the kids to do, to be inspired by maybe what, what they hear, but to use imagination and come up with their, I may write 30 bars. That's the whole arrangement. I want them to implant themselves into the music. I said the most important thing is the notes and the emotion that you get from the notes. Because once you've, you've given them the, the chance to be creative, they will come up with different sounds. I said, look it. I don't care whether you're playing the right notes or the wrong notes. I said, and behind a soloist, it makes no difference. They're looking at me like, they probably thought it was crazy. I don't know what they did or not. But anyway, I said, because we're going to, I'll prove it to you. So I said, okay, we're doing the blues. And one guy is going, blah, 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 blah. And I said, when I give you a cue, I want you to play any note. And I go, pop, that, that's a note. Bop, bop. And sure enough, they did that. And Jesus, what came out was a spontaneity and an emotion on those few little things like that that said, like, they're ready. And then what they did, <laughs> these crazy people at NYU, they played this piece in public at, at, down at, 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 at the, uh, a big convention here. And, there was, and some of the people said, hey, man, let, listen to that band. Man, they're fired up. And they, and, they, and they were playing these kind of chords and they were coming up with riffs and everything else. I said, that's where it's at. I mean, if you write more than, uh, look at, if you look at the, some of the biggest uh, arrangements, they may be uh, six pages, maybe six pages. I mean, it was everything's a repeat. And this is what all the hits is. I said, you, you know, you can do it and you get the right, you go in and experiment for a week. You know, if you had, a, you know, you had 100,000 bucks, you go in and experiment and maybe blow ten or fifteen thousand bucks, you know, just on a different day and, and see what the reaction would be. And and I know that these kids are ready. They're ready to explode, but they need a direction. This is the way to go, you know. And uh, I have fun doing that. I mean, I mean, when I play even my own charts, uh, it I use the the lead sheet. Now the lead sheet is like a piano part, and they said, "Well, what are you going to do?" And I said, "Everybody, you're you're in E flat, and you're in B flat, and you're in concert, right?" I said, "Okay, everybody plays the same notes." I mean, when you do it, it it sounds like an arrangement. It sounds like homilotic, if you want to call it that. But I mean, I've been doing that kind of stuff for a long time. But and, and but the, so now when I play, I so I don't have to transpose for myself if if it's uh in concert, I play I play the, as it as, as it is on the sheet, so I don't have to transpose it. And the trumpet player doesn't have to do it either. He plays what's on the sheet, and you get these seconds and fourths and everything else. And that, and I have a piece of equipment in this in the studio that I, where I use this kind of a technique. I can do that by manipulating the various tracks. You know, I, I, this one of the records here I have. It's it's strings, but I took one of the, I had two banks of strings, and I took some of the, uh, the first violins, the, the two banks of strings of the first violin, I took one of them, put it up an augmented fourth. And everybody said, what are you going to do that? The engineer said, what are you going to do? I said, yeah, we could do that with that machine over there. <laughs> and what comes out is something glorious. I mean, it's just, you say, how the hell, how the hell do you do this? And I did this with, uh, with Larry Coriel's record. Recently, I took some of the tracks. I recorded on four different tracks. I had it on an amplifier, direct, and maybe two other amps or whatever it was. And I t manipulated some of the 
the tracks up a four up or whatever I wanted to feel it should be. And the end result is, is rather interesting. It puts them in, in another harmonic texture. And just people say, Jesus, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I dig that. How, how did you do that? Well, it's very simple. If you, if you got enough tracks and you got enough keyboard, I mean, enough inputs and, and equipment, you can change the pitch, you know, which is nice. This is what I wanted to do, uh, what, 40, 50 years ago, and I had trouble doing it. I mean, I couldn't do it the way I wanted to do it. It would have given it now, if, if I go back to the, some of the original tapes that I made at CBS and try this thing, it'd come up with a whole different sound. It would, you know, it might be glorious, but you need, you need a studio, you need somebody to, you know, a studio, a, a company to work with you.